What's happening my fellow geeks and geek cats? Welcome to a brand new episode of Chris's Custom Collectibles and today we're going to be pimping out a Jack Specific First Order Stormtrooper. Now before I get into the details of what we're going to be doing, I just want to tell you guys about a podcast show called The Court and Tory Podcast Show. Court and Tory are two guys from Hollywood. They talk entertainment news, movie news, and what it's like to generally work in the industry. Now it's not just Court and Tory on the podcast themselves. They also have guests. They have up and rising music stars, movie stars, stars, even YouTubers. Now, what I love about Cord and Tory's podcast is there's no bullshit about it. It's just so natural. It's just two dudes having a chat about the stuff they love. And it's also got geek stuff, you know, they're Star Wars fans, they're Batman fans. So I was right into that stuff. Now, obviously being a podcast, it's all audio, no visuals. So the cool thing is you can have this playing in the background. I usually have it playing in the background when I'm working on stuff in the garage, on tutorials and whatnot. It's just good background noise because the guys are so natural. It's like hanging out with your mates. So yeah, these guys are hilarious. I've left a link in my description box. Go check them out. Tell them I sent you. With that being said, let's get on to the tutorial. Now, I've had this guy sitting here for about three months and my original plan of attack was to get a 18 inch Mace Windu figure. He's like a talking Mace Windu figure. He cost about 70 Australian dollars. What I was going to do is break down all the armor parts and mount it onto that figure so we could have a fully posable Stormtrooper figure. And being the idiot that I am, I left it to the last minute to get the Mace Windu figure. And do you think I could? No. Why? Because they all sold out. So, we need a backup plan. So I've thought, oh, so I've thought long and hard about this. <laughs> So what we're going to do is similar to Captain Phasma. I'm going to be changing the joints here. I will have this arm fixed in the upper position, holding the gun. As you can see here, get a close up of that. This hand is also sculpted to uh, house the gun. But what I'm going to do is hit it with a heat gun, make it so it's a clenched fist. Yeah, that's right. I want to try and customize this figure on an absolute shoestring budget because I get a lot of you guys messaging me saying, Chris, is there any way you can, you know, do this, but on a shoestring budget, more of a tighter budget? I'm like, I will try and do that in my next tutorial. I'll try and use the stuff that I already have available to me, stuff that I've got lying around the house. And if, as a worst case scenario, I do have to go out and buy something, I will. I'm aiming to spend about $20 or $30 customizing this guy. The figure itself was $35 from Target. That equates to... I don't know what, 25 US dollars, 20 US dollars. Now as a bonus, the paint job is fine. I'm gonna leave it. I will be clear glossing it though because the First Order Stormtrooper armor does have a gloss sheen to it, whereas this right now is matte. And also, I'm gonna be painting up the armor as if it's thin, so it's gonna have the bloody handprint. It's gonna be all dusty from the desert and whatnot, all on a shoestring budget and try and spend about 20 or $30. So like Captain Phasma, the first step we have to do is cut this joint here, reposition it in the upper position. I'm gonna get the heat gun and hit this hand with it to make it more of a clenched fist. <laughs> All righty, let's get to it. Are you ready? Okay, geeks, now that I've sanded away all the excess plastic with the bullet head attachment on my Ryobi, which I was calling a Dremel before, but it's actually a Ryobi rotary tool, these things are a lot better than a Dremel. They last longer and they can take a beating. So anyway, the next step now that I've you know, bored out the grooves and whatnot, so this is the upward position that we're gonna be having as if he's holding the blaster, Finn's holding the blaster. The next step is to glue the arm in place. And then as you can see, I've got to go in and fill in the back there with some filler and blend it into the rest of the undersuit. Now, like all my custom collectibles, whenever you're gluing plastic like this, you need a primer. So I'm using the plastic fix. This is the primer pen. You obviously just mark out wherever the glue is gonna be hitting. Let that dry for about five minutes. And then you just got your standard glue here that will bond the two plastic surfaces together. All right, geeks, it's been a good couple of days. I just wanted to let that glue really set adhere and um, just really bond those two surfaces together. 
So the next step is to fill in this elbow joint here and blend it in with the rest of the suit. And for that, I'm gonna be using Knead It because we need it. So this is from Sally's. It's, uh, what is it? A polymer putty. So you mix it up in your fingers and it's like clay. You can sculpt it to whatever shape you want and in 10 minutes time, it sets rock hard, can be sanded, ground down, you name it, which is perfect for what we want. So it comes in this tube and I won't demonstrate now, but I'll just show you the instructions. You can see here, so cut it, mix it and apply it, which is pretty easy. So it's just like handling clay. Please use gloves. This stuff is very, very tacky and you don't want to get it on your actual skin. So we're going to be, you know, cutting it here. Use some paper. You don't want any bits of dirt or whatnot getting into the mix. And then we're just going to be mixing it up and blending it into the elbow joint. Once that's done, I'm just going to be going in with some matte black from Model Masters and just painting it over. And then after that, we're done. The elbow joint is finally done. Right, geeks, I am very happy with the end result of this elbow joint. It ain't perfect, but it's gonna do. And the way we're gonna be displaying this figure, you're gonna be seeing it from this angle here. So, you know, it's not really gonna matter. Now, next up, I don't like the way this hand is positioned. It's the exact same way that this hand is to hold the gun. So you can put the gun in either hand. Because the gun is gonna be utilized in this hand, I wanna make this a clenched fist. Now, what I've done is I've gone ahead and primed the inside of the hand with the primer pen, because what we're gonna do is soften this up, and then we're gonna squeeze it in like a clenched fist and glue it together. And to soften the plastic, just gonna be using a regular hairdryer, give it a good hit for about a minute or two. Don't worry, it's not gonna melt or burn the plastic, it's just gonna soften it, and then we're gonna go in with the glue that comes with the primer, because this is polypropylene, we want it to stick together, and then we're just gonna squeeze it together like a clenched fist and hold it, and then the glue should hold it in place. Okay, Geek, so all the readjusting of the body is done. Now, the next step is to weather this, and we've got to do the bloody handprint on the side of the helmet here. So, I've got myself an array of paints here. We also have to spruce up the gun. It's looking a bit plain at the moment. There are some areas that require some extra black. The scope here has to be chromed in certain areas, and also we're going to be doing some black washes over it, just to get into all those grooves and whatnot. So I've got the black wash, I've got a acrylic brown, I've got a silver, a black, and of course a red for that bloody handprint that is going to go on the helmet. And for the red bloody handprint, I'm just going to be using a Q-tip, dip it in the paint and just dab it on the paper here so it's not too thick and just strategically try and make it look as natural as possible. It seems as though there are thick handprints that start here and that stream out into stringy bits of blood here. Now I'm doing that first because I want to go over with the acrylic wash that's from Creator FX Testers and I want to get into that blood and make it look like it's dried, coagulated blood, not fresh because by the time Finn gets back on that ship, the blood has dried and darkened. So that's the look I'm basing it off. Now as for the suit itself, I'm just going to be going in random areas with the black wash and the brown, making it look like bits of dirt and whatnot, and it's all scuffed, so hopefully it should work out.
Okay, I don't know how well this is gonna work and sound. My Rode mic, which I usually attach to the top of the camera, the battery that you see there is completely dead. So I've left that there as a reminder, I've gotta go down the shop this afternoon and get a new battery. So I'm using the in-house microphone on the camera. So hopefully you guys can understand what I'm saying. If not, May God have mercy on us all. Okay, so the figure itself is pretty much done and all I've done to finish him off, that sounds so wrong, <laughs> is clear gloss the figure itself. I don't need to show you guys me clear glossing the figure, it's pretty straightforward. Plus, you know, I wanna leave a bit of mystery till the end, you know, the big reveal, you know? It's all about the mystery, guys. So the last step is making a base. I think this figure deserves a base. I'm very happy with how it's turned out. This is just a simple yet effective base. It's gonna be themed like the desert. So what I did was I bought this craft stand. I think it was a couple of bucks from Bunnings Warehouse. I just spray painted it with a matte black spray paint because I want the trim there to be black. And what we're gonna do, get some PVA glue, put it on top, just get a disposable brush, and we're gonna wipe it all over the top making sure not to get the trim. Like I said, I want that trim left black. I want this nice and neat and kind of like a museum piece. And then once the glue has been laid out, just got some dirt from my driveway. And it, it's seriously kindergarten stuff, guys. But you know, the simplest ideas are always the most effective sometimes. And then after that, we're done. It's time for the big reveal. So thanks very much for watching guys. If you had any questions, anything you're unsure of in this tutorial, please drop a comment below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. To be honest, this guy turned out much better than I expected. So this is the receipt from Bunnings Warehouse for all the materials needed to make this guy and all up it was $23.86. As always, thank you very much for your continuing support and watching and until next time geeks, please always remember, cosplayers do it best.